Welcome to another video for the Edexcel Further Pure One Maths A Level course. This is another video of matrices and how they apply to linear transformations. Taking a look at the scheme of work, we've represented matrices with, uh, or linear transformations by matrices and we have worked out the matrices for various transformations we need to know. What we need to focus on in this video is combined transformations, okay? So we are focusing on combined transformations and we are using the fact that the transformation represented by matrix A times matrix B is the transformation B done first and then A done upon it. Okay, so on that note, let's start exactly there. Imagine I had two transformations uh, given by the following matrices A and B. Just take a moment to see if you can remember from the last video how to work out what matrix A does, what transformation this is, and what matrix B does, what transformation that is. Well, uh, what we do is we draw out a little picture. I'm going to rub this out at the end, so draw it if you want to now. Uh, let's do A first, okay? We, we take the vector... Uh, 0, 1, or 1, 0, and we take the vector 0, 1, okay, and we work out where they go after that transformation. Well, this one goes to the first column of this matrix, which is negative, I'm going to call this, sorry, by the way, uh, point A, and I'm going to call this uh, point B. Uh, this goes to negative 1, 0, so it goes over here. And this one here goes to 0, negative 1. It goes down here, 0, negative 1. This would be B dash, and this would be A dash. Okay, what transformation is going on there? Well, clearly, and um, we've done this one before, it's a rotation 180 degrees anti-clockwise. So this one is rotation 180 degrees anti-clockwise, I'm going to put anti-clockwise, about 0, 0. 0, 0. Okay, so that's that one there. I'm going to leave that over here. Now we do the other one. Let's uh, rub this out here. Rub this out here. And we'll work out where um, the unit vectors go after this one. Well, 1, 0 goes to the first column, which is 0, negative 1. So 0 across, negative 1 down. So it would go down here. That would be A dash. And this one here goes minus 1, 0, goes over here. So be B dash. Okay, clearly now you can see this is a reflection in the line y equals negative x. So this is a reflection in line y is equal to negative x. Okay, fine. So I'm going to rub this out just for now. Now, imagine I do a combination of transformations. Say I want to step one. Take a point, let's say x, y, any point in the plane, and I want to rotate it 180 degrees anti-clockwise about 0, 0. What I would do to it is multiply it in front by this matrix here, okay, which is matrix A. So I would, uh, I would multiply matrix A by uh, x, y. And having done that, whatever I get out the end, I then want to reflect those answers in the line y equals negative x. So what I could do, having got that, imagine having worked that out, then what I could do is multiply that uh, by the matrix 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0. And that would then uh, perform the operation of a first a rotation anti-clockwise, 180 degrees, about 0, 0. And then afterwards, with those numbers, with those points, a reflection in the line y is negative x. So I would apply b to it afterwards. Now, if I want to work out what's going on here, or what the combined transformation is, what I could do is I could uh, use matrix multiplication. What I could do is I could work out matrix ba and see what that does. So if I multiply these two out, what would I get as matrix BA? Well, this row times this column would give me 0. This row times this column would give me 1. 
this row times this column would give me 1, and this row times this column would give me 0. And so I would have the following. That matrix there. So this is matrix BA. Now, what is the effect of matrix BA? If I want to work out what the effect of that matrix is, well, what is it? How could I do that? Well, I'll do what I did in the previous video. I would see where 1, 0 goes, and I would see where 0, 1 ends up going. Well, 1, 0 goes to the first column of this matrix, which is 0, 1. 0 across, 1 up. So it would go over here. If I call this point, actually, I better just call that point little a, and I better call that point little b. Then this one would end up going up here. So little a would end up going there. And where would um, uh, one, 0, 1 go? Well, it would go where 1, 0 is. So it would go here. So B dash would go here. So A and B seem to have swapped their positions. What uh, transformation is that? Well, it must be a reflection in line Y is equal to X. So um, if I want to know um, what the result is of doing a rotation 180 degrees anti-clockwise about 0, 0, and then reflecting in the line y is negative x, that first and then that, I found that overall it's the same thing as a single transformation, a reflection in the line y equals x. And I got that by multiplying both matrices. So um, the key point to remember, I'll just write up here. If you're doing this, and say if you're working out uh, a, b, that means B first, then A, or if you do B A, what you're actually doing is you're doing A first, then B. Okay, and they're different. The order of them, it makes them different. So let's go on and do an example straight away. Right, I want to, uh, I'm given matrices A, B and C, and I want to find the products of, uh, as follows, and I want to describe the single transformation represented by the product. I've actually done a bit of this in the previous example, but we'll do it again from scratch. Let's do A. A, B. Well, A, B is the following matrices times together. It's negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1, multiplied by 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0. If I multiply those out, what do I get? Well, I get myself 0 here, 1 here, uh, 1 here, and I get myself at 0 here. And by drawing a quick sketch, I, uh, I'm working out this is exactly the one I've just done. If I was to see where that goes and that goes, they actually swap, uh, swap roles. So that one ends up going up here, and this one ends up going down here. This is a reflection in line y is equal to x. Simple as that. Let's do it the other way around. Let's do b a. Well, let, we'll do b multiplied by a. So it's 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0, multiplied by negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Actually, this is the one we did in the previous slide, this one we hadn't done. When we did this in the previous slide, we got 0, 1, 1, 0, and we found that the, the i and j vectors swapped over. So this again was a reflection in line y is equal to x. Okay? So they're a and b done. I'm going to rub these out now, so if you're copying, pause the video, but I'm going to rub out so I can do a, c and the other ones. Okay, we'll do AC now. Uh, question C. A, C. A multiplied by C. It's negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. Multiplied by uh, C, which is 2, 0, uh, 0, 2. If you multiply this out, you get yourself negative 2, uh, 0, 
at 0, negative 2. And you find uh, what a transformation is that? Well, if you're unsure, always draw yourself a quick sketch. Okay, you're asking yourself, where does 1, 0 uh, go and where does 0, 1 go? Well, 1, 0 ends up going to negative 2, 0, so it ends up going over here. And where does this one go? It ends up going 0, negative 2 down here. Clearly, that is an enlargement by scale factor negative 2. So enlargement, scale factor negative 2 about the origin, about 0, 0. Okay, and that one's done. I'm going to move on to D and E, so I'm going to rub this out. Um, so make sure you pause if you need that uh, there. So I'm rubbing this out here. Um, we're going to go for a squared. So d, we're going to uh, do negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1, multiplied by the same things, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. When I multiply that out, what do I get? Well, I get myself 1, 0, 0, 1. I'll leave that for you to check. So where does um, 1, 0 go? Where does this one go? Well, it goes to the first column of this matrix. It stays exactly where it is. And where does uh, 0, 1 go? Well, it goes to the second column of this matrix, which is exactly where it is. So nothing has happened here. This is called the identity matrix, identity transformation. It's no change. And we've done a squared it is, in fact, the identity transformation. And the last one, then, we'll do c squared, and we'll see what c squared uh, did. So uh, c squared would be, uh, this would be question E, it would be 2, 0, 0, 2, multiplied by 2, 0, 0, 2. If you multiply that out, you get 4, 0, 0, 4. Okay, so where does 1, 0 go, and where does... 0, 1 go. Well, 1, 0 goes to the first column of that matrix, which is 4, 0. It goes all the way over here to 4, 0. And where does 0, 1 go? Well, it goes all the way up here to 0, 4. What type of uh, transformation in this? Well, clearly, it's an enlargement. Scale factor equal to 4 about the center, which is 0, 0. And it's as simple as that. Okay, I'd encourage you to try the next question yourself, pause the video, have a go, and see if you can work out the combined transformations of P, Q, and R. Here we go. Okay, so this question tells us that we've got three transformations, P, Q, and R. And it wants us to find the matrix transformation represented by, you do R first, then you do Q, and then you do P. So you do R first, you've worked out R, then you apply Q to it, and then you apply P to it to finish. So really what we're doing is we're multiplying the matrices P times Q times R in that order. So what we're doing is 1, 1, 2, 3 multiplied by 1, 2, 0, 1, multiplied by 3, negative 1, 7, negative 2. Now, if I want to multiply these out, I can just take these first two and multiply them, and then afterwards multiply by the front matrix. So, this here would still be 1, 2, 1, 3, and this here, if I multiply this out, remember I do that row times that column, so I get 1, um, I get 3, I would get 3 take away 2, which is 1, I would do that times that, I would get 7 take away 4, which is 3, I would do that times that, and I'd get negative 1, and I would do that multiplied by that, and I would get negative 2. Now I can just multiply these two together and see what I get. That row times that column, which would be 0. That row times that column, 
which would be 1, that row times that column, which would be negative 1, and that row times that column, which would be equal to 0. So, doing R followed by Q followed by P gives me that matrix. What transformation is that? As always, sketch up a picture, see what happens to I and J. Here's I. 1, 0, here's J, 0, 1. Where does uh, 1, 0 end up? Well, it ends up in the first column of this matrix, so 0, negative 1, 0 across, negative 1 down. That's where that ends up. And this one ends up at 1, 0, which is uh, here. So how have we got ourselves there? Well, what we have done is we have uh, rotated think of that one rotated uh, 90 degrees clockwise about the origin um, and the, everything uh, when you're rotating usually it's anti-clockwise so you would call this a rotation of negative 90 degrees about zero zero so because it's going the opposite way always uh, with these transformations, you go anti-clockwise, that's a positive angle. So if you're going backwards, it's negative 90 degrees. Alternatively, you could have said um, it was a 270 degrees, about zero, zero, a positive 270 degrees. You could have actually done that as well. And we're done. And so to consolidate what we've learned in this video, I would suggest you do the following. You uh, read chapter four, page 90 to 94, look at those examples and do exercise 4F on page 94, questions 1, 6, 7 and 8. And then you should know everything about combinations of linear transformations. Thank you for watching.